I'm on a 6,000 mile road trip exploring the Pacific coast with the goal of knocking out as many new species as possible from my kayak. And I'm catching fish like this. <laughs> yeah, I got color. Yeah! So come along as I fish both freshwater and salt and meet new kayak anglers along the way. What? This is Field Trips with Robert Field. Look at that! That was insane! Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Field Trips vlog. So I've had multiple requests for two different videos. One, how I set up my kayak for offshore fishing, and another, how I set up my kayak and cameras for filming while I'm kayak fishing. So I thought it made a lot of sense to just kind of combine those two and do them in one video. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about how I rig up my kayak uh, for offshore fishing specifically, and then how I rig up my cameras to capture the different angles and make sure I get the shots that I need. So first off, thanks to everyone that requested these videos. Thanks to Kayak Catfish, Average Dude, Cosmo Kayak Fishing, Tony Heinzel, Jacob Costello, Calla Miller, and Austin 12M for requesting this one. All right, so now let's get to it. So for offshore kayak fishing, uh, I use a variety of boats, but most of the time I'm in this, the Hobie Outback. So I'm gonna first talk about the stuff that kind of never changes when I'm offshore, and then I'll go into some stuff that's kind of situational or that I can swap out depending on what I'm fishing for, what equipment I need, that sort of thing. So now we'll talk about kind of some of the basic products and accessories from Hobie that I use to outfit my Outback for offshore fishing. Uh, the first of which is the rudder upgrade. I use the sailing rudder offshore. I don't have to worry about shallow water, obviously, so there's really no downside to it. And it gives me a lot better turning radius and helps me you know, either drift in the wind or control my boat position as I'm fighting a big fish. Next up, I really like to use the bucket up in the front hatch. It gives me that much more storage without it. If I put anything in there, it's just gonna slide all around the hole. So I use that bucket in there to store some of my basic tools. I put them in one of these kind of rail blades, a perforated bag, so I can just grab the bag, get out whatever I need for the small stuff. I'll usually put like my GoPro batteries in there, that sort of thing. Uh, one thing to know, the Outback is a killer boat, but one downside that it does have is in rough water, if you're taking waves over the bow or going through the surf when it's really rough, that front hatch can take on water and that bucket will catch it. So do not put anything in there that cannot get wet. And if you do, make sure that it's in a dry bag. Another thing that I'll use from Hobie is the Hobie H crate, uh, but I'll get to that here in a minute. One really important thing to have, even if you have a pedal kayak like a Hobie, is a quality paddle. You just never know if that pedal drive is gonna break or have issues on the water, and you wanna have a way to get home, even if you lose your drive. So uh, I always go with Accent paddles. This is actually my signature series paddle, the Accent Field Angler, super lightweight. People always ask me how important a quality paddle is, and I always tell them that it is probably the single most important piece of equipment besides your kayak. And that's even more true for offshore kayak fishing. Typically, you're gonna be covering a lot of water, and having a nice, quality, lightweight paddle that's durable and you can rely on is super important when you're offshore, and that thing is basically your lifeline. As for a PFD, I am personally a fan of the NRS Chinook. So this is the Chinook right here. If I'm gonna be offshore, I really like the bright high-vis orange color. Uh, helps boats coming through see me, even if it's foggy or cloudy or anything like that. Um, the Interest Chinook is a true fishing PFD. It's got tons of fishing features on it, tons of pockets and storage. It's got a high back, so that back doesn't sit on my seat and really keeps it comfortable so it's not pushing me forward. You see here, I've got the NRS Co-Pilot knife on the lash tab. I always, always, always recommend having an emergency knife somewhere accessible on your body at all times when you're offshore. You never know when you're gonna flip and get tangled in braid or your rod leashes or anchor rope or anything like that. You always wanna have a way to cut stuff loose of yourself just in case. And what I love about the Co-Pilot, first off, it's got this really secure sheath so I can have it you know, pretty close to my face and not have to worry about it. Pop it out, it comes right off of my hand. It's got a blunt tip, so if I've got rope kind of you know, wrapped around my arm, let's say, I can go in there, get under that rope without stabbing myself, turn it to the sharp edge, and pop it out. One of the edges is dull and one is sharp, so again, I can go in there, turn it, I've got the dull edge against my skin, and I can cut that rope. Um, super important, it comes in a titanium version if you fish saltwater a lot, want to make sure it doesn't corrode, but even the base model, I've never really had issues with corrosion with this knife. I have three PFDs and every single one has a co-pilot on it. I know a lot of guys like to wear inflatables and I do always say that the most important feature on a PFD is that it's comfortable so that you actually wear it. So if you refuse to wear kind of a full body PFD, uh, an inflatable will do fine. 
But I'm personally in the camp that if you're offshore, things can go wrong in a hurry and you don't wanna be adrift at sea with a little inflatable you know, thing around your neck. So when I'm offshore, I never wear an inflatable. I always wear a full body PFD and I personally go with the NRS Chinook. All right, so now let's talk about crate storage solutions in the back. This right here is the NRS Ambush Tackle Bag, uh, and I love this thing for a variety of reasons. One, it's got these D-rings here that I can lash down, secure it down. Uh, I'll talk about this more here in a minute, but you wanna make sure that if you do flip, that your stuff's not gonna go all over the place and fall to the bottom of the ocean. It's made of a waterproof material, so I can actually just close this lid, not even zip it, and because the, the lid overlaps on a big lip, it'll keep your stuff dry through splash and rain, even if it's not zipped closed. And when you're around salt water, that's important so that your stuff's not getting salt water all over it and gonna rust. It's got three integrated rod holders. It's also got customizable dividers inside so you can really stay organized. One really nice thing about the NRS Ambush Tackle Bag is it doesn't take up my entire tank well. So I can actually also have a small day cooler. This is the Bison Coolers 12 can soft pack. Really, really sturdy, really well made. Made right here in the USA. A little bit cheaper than some of the, uh, the bigger name competitors. But it's always nice to either have fresh bait or fresh drinks and snacks while you're on the water. And with the NRS Ambush Tackle Bag back here, I can easily fit this right in front of it. And so this is kind of my go-to option unless I need a little bit more storage or I need a live well. So the other option I'll go with is the Hobie H crate. Now this thing's gonna give you a little bit more room if you like to take a lot of gear with you offshore. Uh, I'm actually pretty guilty of that a lot of times. I really think that simpler is better, less is more when it comes to offshore fishing. But if you need a lot of gear, this is really nice. Uh, the other main reason that I'll use this is because of this, Hobie's H-Rail system. This allows me to mount rail blades of star ports onto my crate, which gives me more options in terms of accessories. So if I need extra rod holders, or if I wanna get an extra camera boom on there or anything like that, this gives me that option. It also has lash down points and comes with straps, so you can really secure it to the boat, which really makes that camera boom more viable because it keeps it sturdy. So the Hobie H crate is another great option. Uh, it's got a lid, but the lid tends to drain water. I mean, water kind of sits on it and it gets through the zipper, so it's really not gonna keep your stuff dry like the NRS one will, but it's a great option if you need more room and need a few more accessories on your boat. And finally, I like to use the Hobie Live Well. Now, the Hobie Live Well is not necessary. Uh, I know tons of guys that will simply use a five gallon bucket and one or two bubblers, little aerators in it. That works just fine. I do like the Hobie Live Well because it actually pumps fresh water up from the ocean. Really gives you nice circulation, keeps your fish alive a long time. It's got three integrated rod holders so I don't lose rod storage. Um, some people do have issues with this. It is not super cheap, so I personally like it a lot, but like I said, a five gallon bucket and a couple aerators will do just fine. And you can also Google for some DIY options to make your own live well that actually pumps water up as well. All right, so now let's talk about some of the accessories that I use on my kayak. I personally like to go with Railblazer accessories, whether I'm offshore, inshore, freshwater, anywhere. I've tried a lot of these companies out and Railblazer in my experience is the most durable, the most versatile, and really the best functionally performing accessories on the market. So for bases, I like to go with the Starport HD. It's kind of their beefier base. On the Outback, I put one next to each flush mount rod holder. The plastic's really thick there, so you get a really good hold. Anytime you're able to, I like to go ahead and use nuts and bolts to make sure that's really secure on there. But if you can't reach the inside of the hole, you can also use self-tapping screws. Now one thing that's really nice about this is that it's kind of like Legos, you can mix and match. Once you have those starboard bases on there, you can change your accessories based on different fishing styles, different things you're doing on that day. So you can really kind of move this stuff around. One of the staples, I almost always have the Railblazer Visibility Kit 2 here in the back. Especially for offshore, you want to be visible to boats. These boats are typically bigger, they're typically faster, and it's typically going to be a lot harder for them to see you, especially if there's decent swell. So better safe than sorry, if you get hit by one of those boats, that could be the end of you. So I always use a visibility kit. I'll turn the light on when I'm launching out if it's low light, and then later when the sun comes up, I'll turn the light off, but you still have that flag so the boats can see you from a long way away. So besides the visibility kit too and the camera boom, another really common accessories that I use from Railblaza are the rod holder too. This is super durable. You can put conventional spinning or fly rods in this one rod holder. So it's really a kind of a one-stop shop. 
I'll put these all around. I trust these to troll from. Uh, a lot of these rod holders out there, you don't want to troll them because if you get a big strike, it could rip this thing out of your boat. But make sure that if you're going to troll from this, that you use nuts and bolts on the Starport HD base so that it's really well secured to your kayak. And still, you don't want to have your drag locked down, which really you shouldn't be anyways if you're trolling, but you want to make sure your drag is not locked down so that the fish hits, not all that pressure is being put on any rod holder that you're using. I also like Railblaze's Moby holder. What's great about this is not only could it hold my cell phone if I want to do like a Facebook Live, for instance, but also I like to put my VHF radio in this. Now, if you're in rough weather, I highly recommend keeping your VHF radio on your PFD. The NRS Chinook has a perfect little tab for it. But if you're in calm water, not worry about getting separated from your kayak, the Moby holder is a great place to keep it so that it's not on your person and getting in your way. And again, if I need more rod storage on any given day, I can swap out a camera boom for a rod holder or anything like that. Um, really kind of customize it from day to day and from trip to trip, thanks to these Railblaze accessories and how versatile they are. For a depth finder, I don't really have a preference in brand. People ask me that all the time. I personally have the Lowrance Elite 7. Uh, really happy with the units, GPS and depth finder combined. I'm not saying that it's better than the other big brands, but it's a great unit. I've been happy with it. One thing when you're offshore, there's typically bigger swells and chop and wind, and so you're always getting sprayed by water, right? So when you get that spray on your screen, it really makes it hard to read, especially when it's bright outside. So I use the Burley Pro Fish Finder Visor. They make one of these for just about every popular fish finder unit on the market. And not only does this keep spray from getting on my screen, which makes it hard to read, obviously, but also it helps reduce the glare from the sun. So I can actually turn down my brightness on my unit, which saves me battery life, and the shade created by this visor allows me to still be able to read the screen even when it's bright outside. Uh, this Burley Pro Fish Finder Visor is one of the best purchases I've made. I think they're about 40 bucks. Highly recommend you get one no matter what unit you have. Now, I ran the internal cables for the Lowrance Elite 7 to the back of my boat. That back hatch is pretty much worthless when you're on the water, you can't reach it. So that's where I keep my battery. And for the battery for this, I use the Nakwa series of batteries. I love these things because they're self-contained and they're waterproof with really no seams. You don't have to have a case on it for it to be waterproof. It's just a waterproof battery. And if you've left any of these deer feeder batteries or anything like that in your kayak when you get water in there, even if they're not sitting in water, just having that water in there as the sun heats up your boat will corrode the ends of that battery. And with this Nakwa battery, I've had zero corrosion issues so far. Really slick unit, highly recommend it. Now, anytime I'm offshore, obviously I have a gaff if I plan on keeping any fish. I like to keep it here on the opposite side from my paddle and the paddle keep. You can also put it in a rod holder. One thing I'd highly recommend, if you saw episode two when I was going out for yellowtail, I almost had a very bad accident with a gaff. Kevin Nakata had let me borrow his gaff and so I wasn't really used to having it in the boat. Uh, didn't have a good place for it and it almost cost me dearly. So uh, I would definitely, no matter what, have some kind of protection over the tip of your gaff. I would also make sure that it's secure somewhere, especially when you're coming back into the surf. And I like to leash mine so that way, if I stick a fish and it takes off, I won't lose my gaff. But the key thing is to not leash it with something too powerful and too strong because if that fish does keep running with your gaff in it, it could flip your boat if that leash doesn't break. So I'd recommend even tying it on with maybe some light fishing line, like maybe 30 pound, something that's gonna break before it flips your kayak if you stick a big fish and it takes off. Another really important accessory for me personally offshore is an anchor trolley. Now I use the Yak Gear Deluxe Anchor Trolley. It's something a lot of offshore guys don't think about, but I'm a really big fan of drift socks. I like being able to kind of slow my drift when I need to. And so having this anchor trolley can really kind of control which position my boat's facing in relation to the wind, which really can help make my fishing a lot more efficient on the water. All right, so I'm not gonna get into my rod setup today. I've had a ton of requests for a rundown of my rods and reels and baits and what I use where. Um, I really don't have time to do that in this video, so that'll be a separate episode that is coming up. But one thing I did wanna mention is that definitely, definitely leash down your rods anytime you're offshore, even if it's a super calm day. Um, actually, the last time I flipped offshore, it was glass-like conditions. It just takes a second of losing focus to flip your boat and you don't wanna be in that position where you get it turned right side up and realize that all five rods you brought are gone. So I like to use Yak Gear leashes. Uh, they make really strong, durable leashes that I can depend on that if I flip, my rods aren't gonna to go to the bottom of the ocean. I'm a big proponent of the old saying, you know, dress to swim and rig to flip. Obviously nobody that ever flipped their kayak was like, I'm gonna go out today and flip my kayak and lose all my stuff. I mean, that, you know, it doesn't happen. It's always unexpected. So if you always rig to flip, then when it inevitably happens, you're not gonna lose most of your gear. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about how I film from the kayak. 
So when I need a reliable camera boom, the only one I go with is the Railblazer Camera Boom 600. Now I did a separate review on this camera boom specifically, so if you wanna check that out, you can click this link up here in the corner, check out the entire review. I talk about exactly why I like these booms the best. But the main things are is that they're sturdy for one, so even if I'm in rough water, I know the shot's gonna be pretty stable, pretty sturdy, and not look terrible. They're super well made, super durable. They hold up really well to salt water. I've never had any issues with salt water and they're really dependable. And what I like about it the most is the ability to do this right here, swing that base in 360 degrees around the base. Now what that allows me to do is when I'm at the launch, I'll sit there and get the GoPro at the perfect angle. I'll use the screen if I have one, if not, just kind of eyeball it. But I make sure that when this thing's out, it's perfectly facing where I want it to. Then when I'm out there waiting for a bite, I'll have this swung in right next to me and I'll have the camera on, but not recording. So I'm not wasting battery life recording nothing, but I'm ready in a moment's notice when I get a run or something hits my jig or anything like that, I simply click record, swing it out in one motion, and I know it's back to the perfect angle that I had it at. That right there alone is what makes these booms different from all the rest, makes them more functional than all the competitors. And really they're what allow me to kind of be this one man, camera crew, director, star, all that stuff. Uh, without this boom, it'd be much more difficult for me to capture the footage that I need. So another thing I love about these Railblazer camera booms is I can easily pop it off the boat and now I've got a boom that I can stick underwater if I want to get underwater shots of a fish or anything like that. Really just a versatile piece of equipment. Typically when I'm on the kayak filming, I'll have one up front just like this facing towards me. I'll have another camera boom behind me, either on the H crate or on another star port on my boat. So then I've got the angle facing me and the angle over my shoulder. And typically I'll have a third angle on the action hat. So the action hat is something I literally never hit the water without. This is the most versatile filming piece of equipment that I have. My buddy Rex Del Rey actually invented it. What's killer about this is that it floats, even with a GoPro on it. So again, if you're in the mindset of rig to flip, dress to swim, if you go in the water, your hat falls off, if you just drilled a GoPro mount in it, that's at the bottom of the ocean now with your $400 camera. With the action hat, this falls off my head if I'm just looking up, uh, look up at my rod, have a run, which I've had happen, hat falls off into the water, or I flip and the hat falls into the water, it's gonna float. So basically, for about 40 bucks, this is an insurance policy for that $400 camera. What's also killer is that it's got a nice foam insert up here, which provides support for that camera, that extra weight, and also makes it more comfortable throughout a long day. This is the new meshback version, which is coming out here soon. And this thing is killer, guys. I'm telling you, if you ever are gonna be filming offshore or anywhere near water, an action hat is a great investment. You can use your GoPro, your Garmin Verb, your Wasp Cam, your cell phone, anything like that. They make an accessory to mount it on this hat. So people ask me all the time how I get such good audio with my GoPros on the water. If you'll notice, every time I'm talking to the camera in one of my videos, I'm typically wearing the action hat. And what I'm doing there is I'm taking the video that's facing me on the camera boom, and I'm layering the audio from my action hat underneath that when I'm editing. So you're seeing my lips move from this camera, but you're really hearing my voice from the camera on my head. And the reason that's so much better is two reasons. One, obviously, the action hat puts the camera much closer to your mouth, so you get a lot crisper audio. But two, no matter what boom you use, any waves or something clanking against the boat or anything like that is gonna reverberate up the boom and into your camera and you're gonna pick up that clanking and clunking and splashing. With the action hat, no sounds are reverberating through your body, so it's gonna give you much cleaner audio when you're talking to your audience. So besides GoPros, I also use a Sony A6300 DSLR, which is actually filming this right now. And the way I keep that dry and protected on the water is with a simple Pelican case. I like the hard cases, so I don't have to worry about dropping it or anything like that. This is waterproof and it floats, so I don't have to worry about securing it down or even leashing it. And I typically have this sitting right here underneath my legs. I can still pedal on top of it if I'm in the high position. And that way it's quickly accessible so that if my buddy hooks up or dolphin surface next to me or there's a sea turtle, I can quickly grab that, get my camera out and film it. Now the Sony a6300 is not waterproof on its own, so once I take that thing out, it's at risk. So I only take it out when the water is calm, I know I'm in a controlled environment and I'm not worried about flipping or dropping that camera. And I always, always put the neck strap on because you never know when you're gonna be holding that camera, dolphin comes up next to you and sprays you and startles you and you drop the camera in the ocean. I can't think of anything much worse than that. Uh, if you wanna check out the Sony a6300, there is a link in the, in the description of this video down below. Check it out, you can buy it on Amazon. It is, I think, the best bang for the buck in its price range. 
Really, really killer camera for video. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for this episode of the Field Trips Vlog. I hope you learned a little bit of something about how to rig up your kayak for offshore fishing and for filming. If you have any questions at all or want me to elaborate on any point, comment below. I reply to every single comment on my YouTube channel. And as always, if you have any suggestions or requests for future vlog episodes, comment those below as well. I will definitely take every single one into consideration and I will shout you out if I use your idea in another vlog episode. All right guys, well thanks for checking out vlog episode four of the Field Trips West Coast series. Next up, I'm heading up to Morro Bay, California to meet up with John Kenny. We're gonna be fishing in great white country for lean cod. Hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you on the next one.